What is up people of the internet, it is your boy Rob coming back today again with another video and today we are going to be covering the best OBS studio settings for streaming and creating content on Valorant. This is a part one of three video, this is going to be me breaking down all the stuff that goes into behind the scenes and how I personally create and stream content on Valorant. Video one, this is going to be the OBS studio settings. Video two is going to be me covering my mic settings, the microphone setup that I have. And then part three, possibly the final, will be how I get my webcam to look the way it does. If you guys do want to see anything else, make sure to leave a comment saying what you'd like. And also leave a cheeky sub, you know, if you, if you like the content, you know, we vibe in, we having a good time. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Personally, I use OBS Studio. There are two OBSs you can use. You Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. Streamlabs OBS I would recommend to anyone that is new to streaming and is trying to get into the game and pick up how to stream. That is completely fine, I respect that and these settings will still apply though the visual look and how you do that may look a little different. But for me personally, I use OBS Studio, it does the job for me, it works well, it, it, it does what it's meant to do. At the end of the day, we're making content for Valorant and that's what happens, that's, that's the big dub, that's what we're looking for. Before we get into the encoder settings, audio settings and video settings, let's first cover OBS itself and also game capture. So here we have OBS Studio in all its glory. Now, of course, I don't have Valorant open. I don't have anything going on, but some people have this issue when they're using game capture, which I would highly recommend. It reduces input delay and increases performance on both the game and the stream. It captures a black screen when they play Valorant and People are very confused and going, why is this happening? Uh, very simple solution, very easy way around this. It's called type in OBS Studio 64 bit and running ad as administrator. Simple tip, works like a wonder. Now we'll just quickly go into the game capture if anyone is unfamiliar with using game capture. Um, personally, I've always preferred the, there is like the automatic capture any full screen application. I've had issues with that in the past. I know other people do, some people don't. But I personally use capture specific window. In this case is the Valorant win64 shipping.exe Valorant window, which we capture. Um, match tile, otherwise fine, blah, 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 blah. Um, I leave all this unchecked apart from capture cursor and use anti-cheat compatibility hook. If you are using a stretch resolution, I would recommend force scaling this to 1920 by 1080. Easy way to do that. You literally go like that and then type in Oh gosh, I cannot type 1920x1080. And then boom, you are done. Your screen will be stretched to the resolution and it's all good to go. So that's how you sort out black screen issues on Valorant. And also if you're playing at 4x3 or a stretch resolution, how to get it to still take up the full screen on OBS. Another tip before we go into all the settings is disabling preview. It really, 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 really really helps performance on a single rig streaming pc please do it you can thank me later don't worry i it it saved me a few times and given me probably about 10 to 15 percent better fps when i'm streaming huge dub there we've now covered those let us now get into the actual settings the beef good old juicy bits of this video so for streaming if you don't know how to stream there are many other videos, but we'll give it a quick TLDR. Got multiple services you can stream to. Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. We stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 2 p.m. BST. Link will be down in the description. Though, those may change because I'm moving back to university soon. So keep an eye out for that, but make sure to leave a follow, drop a sub. Don't sub on Twitch though, because that's money. Sub on YouTube. Um, but anyway, I've connected my account there. Easy, done, dusted. Have the Twitch chat add-ons if you are using Twitch chat. Um, having Twitch chat in your OBS. I will also discuss how I personally use my chat. Have better TTV and Frank faces on. If you'd like to know more about those as well, feel free to leave a comment and I can make a video discussing how to set up these add-ons and also how to use them. But anyway, stream done. Output. We're a big boy. We use output mode advanced. We're no simple bitch. We ain't no basic bitch here. We're advanced. We're a big boy or big girl or big Apache helicopter. We ain't judging in 2020. So let's get right into this. Encoder, we personally use an NVIDIA NVEC H264. The new setting, you shouldn't be able to select the old one anymore, but not going to judge because you never know. Valorant is a CPU-based game. So on a single streaming rig, 
use the GPU encoder for the most part is what I would say nine times out of 10 to use the GPU based encoder. For us, we're using NVIDIA and NVIDIA's NVEC encoder is extremely good. It is pretty much up to standard with the CPU based X264 encoder. So if you are debating between the two, go with the NVIDIA NVEC. I would seriously recommend it on a single streaming rig. It will have better performance. The quality will be just as good if not better in some situations. If you're on AMD, I'm sorry, this video is not for you. But anyway, as I said, we're using the advanced output, NVIDIA NVEC X264. Um, I enable enforced streaming service encoder settings. I recommend that just in case, just for stream stability and stuff, but you can disable that if you want to. I don't rescale up my output in output. I do that in video if I am gonna do that. So I say, leave that unchecked. Rate control, CBR, boom, done, dust, it's simple. Bit rate, I stream at 6,000. Twitch only support, well, Twitch supports, says it supports up to 6,000, which for those that don't know is you need roughly a six to eight megabyte upload speed, if not higher. Um, to stream at 6k bitrate along with having your PC being able to handle that. You can stream at 8000 bitrate that can cause stream instability. So that is kind of at your own risk. Any higher than that is pointless. Don't stream above 8k. Streamers might say this, don't stream above 8k. It's not worth it. Does absolutely nothing for your stream. Keyframe interval, leave it at zero. I personally would recommend if you're working on the 20 series uh, GPU cards or even the 30 series as they are coming out soon-ish, max quality. For me personally though, I only use quality as I only have a 1070 uh, GPU, which does the job. It adds a tiny bit of interruptions when I'm currently, when I play Valorant. So I, I stick with quality. Um, by the way, max quality or quality. Profile, you have high. Look ahead, you have unchecked, psycho visual tuning checked, GPU at zero, and max B frames set at two. For recording, I use this all at MP4. Everything's pretty much the same here, except we bump that quality up to max quality. And also my bitrate is 10,000 instead of 6,000. Recordings, you have no limit as you are not streaming to a service. You're just recording to your hard drive. Audio settings, I have this all at 320 um, bitrate just to make the quality a little bit crisper and crunchy and High definition ASMR. I don't know what to say there. And finally, I do have a replay buffer enabled. Again, this is another thing that I'm more than happy to cover if there is enough interest in setting this up. But with that being said though, that is the output settings all sorted. I'll quickly touch on audio settings, though this is all personal preference. And again, it's all dependent on what gear you actually have. So don't pay too much attention to this. Sample rate at 44.1 kilohertz. For desktop audio, I use my Astro Mixamp Pro, which I have my HyperX alphas plugged into. And then for my mic, I have my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface, which is plugged into my Shure SM57. So not very much to do there. Very simple. Leave it, you know, set up how you feel it is right. Now we go on to video settings. Base canvas, 920 by 1080. There is no reason to do anything otherwise unless you have 1440p or a 4K monitor. You're lucky fuckers if you're using that. Good job. Output scaled resolution. Right now I'm trialing 1920 by 1080p and I think it's working all right, but usually my go-to resolution and the resolution I would recommend to anyone getting into streaming is 1600 by 900. This is a resolution just slightly below 1080p, but above 720p. This means it's that nice in between. It's a little bit more higher quality, but it's also not as demanding and overall can actually look better in some instances than 1080p when you are streaming at 6k resolution. So that is kind of up to you what you want to mess around with. But personally, I'm currently rocking 920 by 1080. Um, I can't type. Downscale filter, Lancars, sharpened scaling, 36 samples, and then 60 FPS. Uh, the only reason I would ever change any of these resolutions is if I'm on a lower end rig. I'd personally change this down to 720p resolution, and then I'd probably put my frame rate at 30 or 48. As 48 is a little bit smoother than 30, this is a similar thing to the 1600 by 900 resolution, but it's not as demanding as 60 FPS. But for you gamers that are truly gaming and trying to make the best content, 60 FPS, 1080p, you know, industry standard, it looks beautiful, it looks pretty, it does the job. That is the encoder video audio settings all sorted. Along with these, I have the stream information activity feed add-on bit in my OBS studio. This was one of the issues that OBS lacked for a very long time that Streamlabs OBS had on top of them. They've added this and now pretty much on par. To do this, you go to view docs and then you can add chat, stream information, Twitch stats and activity feed. So you can actually enable a chat here and just have it plugged in. I personally do not do this as I have a vertical monitor. 
I use a program called Chatterino. I will have a link in the description below. It's a very simple way to view chat and if anything, I think is a more clean and easy to understand way of reading the default Twitch chat. Along with showing all of my alerts that aren't just channel point requests, this includes donations, follows, gifted subs, raids and posts. It also controls my sub goal counters, bit counters, follow counters, all that kind of stuff, which Streamlabs OBS has deep by default built in. You can use this program and it's just as easy. But with that being said, guys, these are the best OBS studio settings for streaming and creating content on Valorant. If you have liked it, make sure to leave a sub, drop a like, and also comment what you would like to see next. Also stay tuned for next Friday, where I'll be covering my mic settings. Now again, sound as crispy as it does. And also give you some help if you say are on more of a budget microphone or are trying to step your audio game up. And then the Friday after, we'll be covering my webcam settings and how I get my webcam to look the way it does. With that being said, peace out, Tulu, and goodbye. Later.